Hello, everybody, and welcome. This is Adrian. Thank you so much for joining me today. So I've got something um, kind of different today, something kind of special on the channel. We're going to be playing this mod for Empire Total War. It's the American Civil War Brothers vs. Brothers mod. Apparently, this came out in December... I believe it was December of 2015, so it's been out almost a year now, actually, and I've never played it myself. Um, I actually saw this on a, on a live stream just the other day, and I kind of wanted to pick it up and, and just play it and see how it is. And it's actually a pretty cool little mod. Um, there's some things about it that are, you know, a little bit kind of dated. The, the game itself, Empire Total War, is dated. The engine's dated. It doesn't run amazingly well. But, um, you know, having it, having Empire Total War in a Civil War aspect is, is actually really interesting. So I just wanted to, to do a couple episodes of this on the channel and just kind of play it and, and you know, just kind of go through the ropes of, um, of this mod. And just see what's different about it and, and play it and see if you guys enjoy it. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So you can do um, a Civil War campaign here. And you get to choose either the uh, United States of America or the Confederate States of America. And so we're going to be playing as a, um, the United States of America here in the start years in 1861. Um, obviously, we own most of the North and the Northern Territories that accept um, or that, that have banned slavery. The South uh, owns most of the South, obviously, and the, um, the Southern Territories that accept slavery. And so... Um, we're, we're going to play as the United States, and we're going to play We're going to play pretty historically. During the American Civil War, the Union was a name used to refer to the federal government of the United States, which was supported by the 20 free states and five border slave states, and it was opposed by 11 southern slave states that had declared a secession or a session to um, join together to form the Confederacy. So, um, let's go ahead and play. See, gameplay options, no advisor help, no CPU moves, automatic city management's fine, battle time limit, how about 60 minutes? That's fine. So, obviously, um, in 1861, the world is entering into the Industrial Age, and so this game is, is a lot different from the original Empire Total War in the main sense that, like, gun battles and warfare and stuff is, is incredibly fast-paced. You know, people, um, guns fire quickly, artillery is absolutely devastating. It's it's a pretty interesting pretty interesting mod. So we're gonna we're gonna jump into the to the campaign mode here, and I kind of want to just play it and see how it goes. So um, I believe this is actually outdated. It's not 3.5. This is actually version 3.62 of this mod, which I believe is the final version that that I could find anywhere. Um, I don't believe there's any other versions available to to my knowledge. Um, so here it is. So we own um, obviously Maine and, and Massachusetts and New York. New York, uh, Pennsylvania, and then Washington, D.C. were some of the big regions of the North. Um, Ohio, Michigan, and Illinois, and Missouri, to a lesser extent. Kentucky was actually pretty uh, important as well. And then over here in, in some of the uh, more Western territories that we acquired during the uh, Mexican-American War and all the way to the push to Oregon, we actually have Nebraska, Iowa, and Minnesota, Kansas Territory. California is actually not shown here. This is um, as far as Santa Fe, New Mexico. And so if we kind of, you know, explore the map here, we do have the uh, the Republic of Mexico to the south. We do have the um, Grenadine Confederation. Uh, we have the Netherlands here and uh, at uh, Curacao. And let's see what else do we have. We have Spain actually owns uh, Trinidad and Tobago here. Uh, Dutch Guiana still belongs to the Netherlands here. We have French Guiana, France, the uh, Leeward and Wayward, uh, Windward Islands belong to the French. Um, this would be the French Republic in this time, 1861. Hispaniola is actually Haiti. It's independent. We do have uh, Britain controls uh, but the Bahamas and Jamaica. Cuba is in the control of Spain. Obviously, all of this is that uh, belongs to the Confederate States of America, which are um, we're actually at peace with the Confederates right now because this this initial campaign actually starts in um, I believe it's January 1861. The war wasn't officially declared until April, so we have a little while to go. Each turn, each turn, each tick here of the end turn button is actually um, I believe two weeks two weeks so like to raise a regiment of regular troops costs like i think it's three turns which is six weeks which is i guess kind of historical um i believe militia takes like four weeks or something like that so it's it's actually pretty interesting it's a pretty interesting little mod here um let's see all of, obviously all of canada belongs to uh britain so labrador and, and newfoundland and stuff belongs to britain so this is all canadian territory so um yeah so uh first thing we want to do is let's take, let's take a look at diplomacy here so we do not want to trade or do anything with the confederates because we do expect to be going to war here fairly soon let's go and take a look at um perhaps britain does britain want some sort of alliance let's actually go ahead and offer the military alliance they say no what about france possibly uh there's there's a there's a possible um ho hopefully some sort of move to towards france for um 
Maybe an alliance? I don't know. Hmm. They're actually indifferent, so possibly not. Let's go and request an alliance. No. Um, there's some things about this mod that are a little weird. Like, obviously, Britain during this time was not an absolute monarchy. It was actually a constitutional monarchy. So, um, obviously, it says here these are, these are all republics. Uh, the Netherlands was also not a republic at this time. It was actually constitutional monarchy. Um, so, yeah, there's some things there about it that are, that are not exactly historical. That's okay. Um, let's see. Can we trade with Spain? That'd be kind of cool. Spain will actually agree to trade with us. Let's go for Haiti. Haiti, um, apparently Haiti is terrifyingly powerful. That's interesting. Let's trade with Haiti. We're going to want to trade maybe with the Grenadine Republic or Confederation. Uh, president Mariano Rodriguez is the president there. Okay, so we're trading with all the nations besides the Confederates. And so who are we? We are the United States of America, obviously. We are unionist. That is our uh, population sentiment. And we are a republic. So um, that's good. That's cool. So... Basically, for the Civil War, because the Civil War hasn't broken out yet, I can actually choose, to some degree, how I fight the Civil War. Um, so, where I'm going to primarily focus is going to be in the three big cities here. We're going to have uh, Rochester, Central New York, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and Washington, D.C. That's going to primarily be um, where we focus our uh, our offensives and, and focus our industry and such. Uh, Kentucky is going to be uh, pretty important as well, and possibly St. Louis, Missouri. Everything else is going to be primarily economic in nature. We're going to want to raise troops from, from primarily Santa, uh, or St. Louis, Missouri, uh, Kentucky. Uh, Pennsylvania is going to be pretty important, as well as um, maybe somewhere in Iowa and Minnesota. Uh, Nebraska Territory and the Kansas Territory are actually pretty, pretty mild territories, but in Sioux Falls, Iowa, and Minnesota, these actually have a lot of building slots that we can use to, uh, to raise a lot of troops. So we'll have to, we'll have to do that. We start out with $50,000, which is a lot. Our population here, let's see what it says. Um, 1.97, is that 19? No, it's not 19 million, right? So this is, um, this is 1.9 million. Um, that's also a historical, the population of, um, the union at the time of the civil war, I believe was about, I believe it was 20 million or so. Um, I believe of the Confederate States, it was 10 million. Yeah, that sounds about right. So 10 million for the for the Confederate States, if you basically um, divide that by four, you'd get about 2.5 million adult males of military age. That's that's kind of like a good um, rough estimate of of a country's population, right? So if the Confederate States has 10 million people, just in general, slaves, people, women, men, and then you divide that by four, you get adult men of military age usually 18 to 45 years old so that's like a rough a rough estimate you can you can use that for basically any country and you might get decent numbers hopefully uh they can vary widely so um yeah so this this here this number is definitely way off um if i was to time this number by four say we round up to two million you get eight million people which is definitely not right for the for the um the union at this time but then again population doesn't actually matter that much in this game so that's fine Capital is apparently Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, which is also not true. However, I could see why that would be like that, um, because obviously Washington D.C. being so close to Richmond, Virginia, since these are both capitals, um, the Confederate state capital is in Richmond, Virginia, and then our capital is Washington D.C. I guess it would make sense for the game to move that to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, just to make sure that there isn't a game over or something like that really quickly. We make seventeen thousand dollars per turn. Policies. We don't have any taxes at the moment for anybody uh, because, you, as you can see, unrest is kind of on the fringe here. Unrest is actually pretty good in most of the uh, the old north, north, um, northeast, and, and New England. Basically, that's what you would call this is New England. So, uh, well, obviously, we have Abraham Lincoln. He's the uh, apparently the Lord Protector. <laughs> um, Abraham Lincoln is our president. <clears throat> He's 45 years old, and his uh, current location is in uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, which is which is obviously historical, but that's okay. We have some. Um, some cabinet members. We do have Edward Bates, Simon Chase, uh, Salmon Chase, uh, William Seward as Prime Minister. Uh, let's see, Simon Cameron as Secretary of War, and Gideon Wells as Secretary of the Admiralty. Okay, and our current population apparently is 61%. So we have another election in, let's see, 500 weeks? Or 500 turns? I'm not really sure how long that would be. That'd be a long time. We do have some opposition candidates, apparently. Interesting. <clears throat> Okay, so this is the American Civil War mod. Like I said, it's not perfect, but it is kind of interesting. So let's go and take a look. Uh, we're going to need to build up our economy because we actually don't start out with a standing army at all. Um, historically, the United States had about 16,000 men in the standing army at the beginning of the war. But 
in this mod for the sake of uh, balance, kind of, to allow the AI and you some, some leeway room in how to fight the Civil War, they're actually going to start us off with no standing forces. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to upgrade a lot of structures. Um, I'm going to focus primarily here in the, in the New uh, England area for now. So let's go ahead and take a look here at um, how about, yeah, Washington, D.C. Let's go ahead and get a military governor's barracks that allows us to get uh, quite a bit here. We're just gonna we're just gonna kind of go crazy. We're just gonna upgrade as much as we can. Um, first, primarily in the big cities, and then and then hopefully in some of these commercial ports here. These commercial ports are actually pretty expensive. Um, obviously, there's actually steamships. You can get steamships and howitzers, sail frigates, steam frigates. Pretty cool stuff. Let's take a look here. Farms are gonna be incredibly important, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead. This is uh, Boston, Massachusetts. This was also a very very important city. Um, for New England, we're not going to upgrade. I don't think I don't think we're actually going to upgrade these these um these ports here for now. I think we might hold off on that. Let's go and take a look here. Governor's residence in Falmouth, Maine. Considering that we're close to the British, there is a possibility of British intervention in the uh, in the American Civil War. Um, definitely during the time of the Civil War, it was a very real possibility that that something might happen. So, oh, it looks like we're out of money there. Uh, I'd rather prefer to upgrade maybe some of these structures here. I would love to get Rochester Central New York up and running. Um, let's try and... Uh, yeah. Let's see what else can we do here. This is 22 yards of textiles, right? So this is a textile factory? Okay, yeah, like I said, this mod isn't perfect. There are some things about it that could have been done a little better. Just maybe... It, it doesn't mean so much not work as far as game mechanics. It just looks like it could use some polish. Which, uh, by any means, is, is not like a problem, per se, right? Every, everything can use polish. Thacker's Court. Interesting. Governor Pasha, Thacker, yeah. Historically, interesting. Okay, so there it is. We built up a lot of stuff everywhere. I would prefer to build up a little more, but obviously the build times here, like, so 14 turns is about 28 weeks, which is basically half a year. It's quite a long time, right, to build up a lot of this here. Six turns, six turns, ten turns there, twelve turns. So um, you can even see here the recruitment of troops. There's a huge, huge array of troops. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania is our primary recruitment center for the nation. And you can see here we got a huge assortment of troops, man. Union Battery B, 4th U.S. Artillery, 3rd Union. Uh, or this is a Union 3-inch horse artillery. You got some 10-pounder Parrot rifles, 14-pounder James rifles, um, 76th Pennsylvania Infantry Regiments so that are skirmishers. You got Union Regulars, Pennsylvania Bucktails. Uh, I will admit there is there is a pretty pretty huge degree of um, I guess what what I would call I guess depth is depth the right word for it I don't know but it it definitely looks like the developers put quite a bit of work into at least making lots of different units and and unique units and stuff like that so we're gonna go ahead and end the turn here um, our next turn we're gonna have to probably fortify some of the west Let's see trade agreement uh, on behalf of the Confederate States. Um, trade agreement and single payment. Well, we're going to be declaring war anyway, but if they're going to give me their whole treasury, I'm going to go ahead and agree to this uh, this this trade agreement, $50,000. I don't think I could turn that away for any sort of sense at all. So let's fortify. Um, let's get some tobacco, actually. Let's go ahead and take a look here at uh, Lancaster, Ohio, Rochester, New York. Make sure we get all this upgraded. We got a barracks here. We have a, a regional command. This is for United States Marine Corps, and then we have the barracks itself. Awesome. Let's take a look here. We're going to want to go for Illinois. Illinois. What about... This is St. Louis, Missouri. This is a military governor's barracks. Uh, we got some Zwabs. We have some uh, Union Iron Brigades. That's going to be awesome. We can defend the West to some degree. Anyway, Jackson, Mississippi. That's going to be a pretty important center to take. If we take Mississippi and then you take care of New Orleans, Louisiana, you actually split the Confederacy in two, which is historically what happened under the direction of uh, Ulysses S. Grant. So let's go ahead and take a look here. Upgrade some of these structures here. We still have about $37,000. Um, railroads and infrastructure are going to be huge. You're going to need to upgrade those quite a lot. Um, probably, probably won't have to focus too much over here. However, we will go to, let's go to Kentucky. Uh, how about Missouri, Washington, D.C., definitely Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. $6,000 to upgrade the infrastructure here, as well as Albany, New York, and I think also Boston. So that, and then let's actually, let's let's start training up some troops. We're going to need to make a move here. Um, let's go ahead and get some... I do want to take a look at the morale here of some of these troops. Higher mor morale is, is pretty important in this game because the fact that... The fact that guns fire so quickly... 
like reloading skill of 43 here, accuracy of 36. Those are pretty high values for the Total War engine. Uh, range of 150, that's huge. That's huge for this Empire Total War engine. And so you'll notice in combat that the range is huge. People fire really, really quickly, and it's awesome. It is it is super cool to watch battles. The number of men, 225 men in this regiment here, it's pretty significant. And so you're going to find that morale, uh, a lot of troops will actually break very quickly. And so it's hard to maintain a line um, with how much battle goes on and stuff like that. Like even for these regulars here, like range of 150, accuracy of 40, reloading skill of 46. And um, even these guys are not actually resistant to morale shocks. They can break and run easily. <clears throat> so um we're gonna go i think here to see for for these regular line infantry these these are 270 men in a regiment they take uh two thousand dollars to recruit and six weeks to train or three turns so maybe we'll go over here and get some volunteers first here in uh, washington dc i think we'll just focus up right there for now let's go and end the turn here confederate states want a military alliance obviously we're not going to do that okay so we have, our early, right now it's early February of 1861. <clears throat> the South has seceded. The first use of telesc uh, telescopic sites has been reported. So this is um, this is a, what they call the Chronicles. This is like a newspaper. It'll tell you what happened historically during this date. So I'd like to read these out. Uh, the South secedes when Abraham Lincoln, a Republican staunch unionist and known opponent to slavery, is elected president of the U.S. The South Carolina legislature perceives a threat. Calling a state convention, the delegates voted to remove the state of South Carolina from the Union on 20th of December, 1860, claiming it their constitutional right to do so. This was actually a day after my birthday. The secession of South Carolina is followed by six more states, Mississippi, Florida, Alabama, Georgia, Louisiana, and Texas. This was all by the 1st of February, 1861. The territory of Kansas is given statehood and admitted into the Union. In the first use of telescopic sights, a standard weapon of the sharpshooter, light infantry troops recruited for their marksmanship skills, was a sharps breech loading rifle. Um, the muzzle loading cap lock rifle has been used uh, for long range work. Interesting. By the time of the Civil War, target shooting in the United States was a well established and very accurate science. The sharps breech loaders were a step in the right direction for speed of loading and accuracy combined, but they were not really any more accurate than similar civilian hunting rifles of the period. This is why there were also special service rifles with a sharpshooter, such as the caps lock rifle, which could also be fitted with a telescopic sight for additional long range accuracy. Cool. So introduced from 1861 onwards, um, this was the first recorded instance of telescopic sights being used for military purposes. Pretty cool. Okay, so I guess um, in 1861 was the first use of optics. That's that's pretty kick ass. Let's go ahead and see. I'm actually going to go ahead and I think I'm going to upgrade... Um, here in Maine, I'm actually going to go ahead and get a military governor's encampment. You never know what would happen with Britain... In fact, even training up a navy, um, get some first-rate steam frigates here pretty early on might actually be very useful. Let's go, ahead, let's go ahead and upgrade these commercial ports as well. Um, actually, I might hold off on upgrading this guy. I would instead prefer to have a, a, a ship of some kind. This takes how many turns? This is eight turns to recruit. Wow, it's a long time. Can we get any troops? Um... I could get a general. So you can't actually, in in normal Empire Total War, you can actually just select a unit stack and recruit a general. But here you actually can't do that. So I might, I might actually get a general right now. I'm not really sure who. Hmm. William Tecumseh Sherman would be would be pretty appropriate. He wasn't in command, I don't believe, at this um. In this stage of the game, 1861, maybe he was. I'm not sure. Yeah, no, I guess he did, yeah, during the American Civil War. He uh, served, I believe he served in the West. He was the first modern general. He served under Ulysses Grant, actually, in 1862 and 1863. So maybe he wasn't in command in 1861. I don't know. I know McClellan was for sure. I guess to go pretty historical, we'll go for McClellan. George B. McClellan. So uh, in the next turn, we're going to probably train up some more troops in, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Washington, D.C. And then actually, we'll probably start fortifying Kentucky and uh, St. Louis, Missouri. So let's go and end the turn there. Okay, we got late February of 1861, South creates a government and Robert E. Lee, Confederate Civil Service. So the South creates a government. At a convention in Montgomery, Alabama, the seven seceding states created the Confederate Constitution, a document very similar to the United States Constitution, but with greater emphasis on the autonomy of each state. Southern Democrat Jefferson Davis is named as a provisional president of the Confederacy until elections can be held. And Southern troops began to seize federal forts and uh, military stores throughout the South, stating that these are now Confederate state property. And uh, the idol of the South to this day, Virginia Robert Edward Lee, has some difficulty in adjusting to the new form of warfare that unfolds with the Civil War. But this does not prevent him from keeping the Union armies in Virginia at bay 
for almost three years. Yeah, so um, General Robert E. Lee is perhaps one of the greatest military um, generals to ever come out of the United States in history. Um, this guy did did actually, in fact, hold off Union troops here in Virginia for, for just about three years. Um, he was very good at what he, what he did. Um, Gettysburg was the turning point for him, but even then, people usually claim that Gettysburg was not entirely uh, of his fault, actually. It was more so um, some of the defeats of, of Gettysburg were actually of his uh, subordinates. So let's take a look here. Um, it would be worth getting some some um, some more fortification here in Illinois, but I think I'm going to start training up some some men, possibly. Uh, definitely here in Kentucky, Union State Militia should be fine. They're pretty crap troops, to be honest, um, but they'll have to do. Washington, D.C. We just got um, some West Virginia volunteers and Maryland volunteers. Um, this is the third North Carolina volunteer mountain inventory. Melee attack of nine, charge bonus of 14, defense of eight, and morale of 11. So cavalry are pretty, pretty interesting, especially during this time in the American Civil War. Um, cavalry can get cut down pretty easily by armed rifles and actually especially considering how, how fast people fire. However, they're actually very potent in a, a melee charge. So these guys here, these guys can actually, I wonder if these guys, can you, can you, they scare people in battle. The first U.S. Cavalry, these guys are actually Dragoons, so I think they fire from horseback, if I remember correctly. These guys are actually just straight-up missile cavalry in general. I think we're going to get two units of, of cavalry, and possibly two guns. I would prefer maybe a 14-pounder uh, James rifle and perhaps maybe a howitzer. And I think we'll raise some more. Who's better out of the vo these volunteers here? Um, the Virginia volunteers are better in ranged, and the Maryland volunteers are better in uh, close quarters combat. We're going to go for the West Virginia volunteers. They actually have more morale as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at Philadelphia. We have George B. McClellan. He's a general. He's on the way. We're going to need more inventory for sure. Let's take a look here. These um, these Union regulars have 10 morale. What about uh, mounted inventory? 10 morale as well. Yeah, but they can be dismounted uh, to fight on foot. They're principally armed with infantry rifles. And then we have the 7th, uh, 76th Pennsylvania Infantry Regiment. You can only have how many of these guys? I think it's two. We have the Zwabs. Defense. Wow, 56 accuracy on those on those 76th uh, Pennsylvania. We're gonna we're gonna get some of those guys. What about the Union regulars? Union regulars actually only have 40. There's quite quite a discrepancy in accuracy, actually. What about the Zwabs? Let's take a look. 44 accuracy for them. The Union 69th Pennsylvania Irish volunteers. They're actually fairly cheap to uh to upkeep. 143, 1400 to recruit themselves. It's actually not bad. Let's go for them as well. And how about, I think we will get some, um, these guys are all recruiting in three turns and two. I think some buck, bucktail inventory from, from uh, Pennsylvania should be okay. Okay, alrighty. Well, that's, um, that's the beginning of this episode for now. I think I'm going to go ahead and take a quick break here. Let me know what you guys think about this. Um, we won't probably play too much of this, but I just wanted to play just a little bit of it, maybe a couple episodes and just see how you guys like it. So thank you so much for watching as always, and uh, please make sure to like, subscribe, and comment, and I will see you guys soon.